Mr. Floyd, uh, based on your review of the video, did start complaining of shortness of breath prior to being placed in the prone complaint, prone position, right? Yes, I heard uh, on more than one occasion he, he, he say the words, uh, I can't breathe. And if um, Mr. Floyd had simply gotten in the back seat of the squad car, do you think that he would have survived? Checking our medical testimony. You may give it a me if you have a medical opinion as to that. Overall, to that extent. So, had he not been restrained in the way in which he was, I think he would have survived that day. I think he would have gone home or wherever he was going to go had he not been subjected to the prone and positional restraint that he was. So, in other words, if he had gotten in the squad car, he'd be alive. Um, I think my answer remains the same. Anything other than that scenario that he was subjected to, I have no reason to think from a medical perspective that he would not have survived that day, correct? And in terms of the prone position, you would agree that the prone position is not in and of itself inherently dangerous? In an ordinary individual, if we were to take away everything else that was going on, and we and someone was just simply lying in their in the prone position while there are many patients who that would be inherently dangerous the average individual i would agree with you probably just lying flat in that situation generally wouldn't be dangerous even in the icu there are circumstances where people have serious medical conditions where they're maintained in the prone position agreed in the icu when patients are put into the prone position, it is when it is a desperate attempt to save someone's life where their lungs have actually developed what we call acute respiratory distress syndrome or ARDS. They have a ventilator in to make sure that the amount of air that they get, no matter their positioning, will always be enough. And so it's a funny thing to think about putting someone in the prone positioning in the ICU on a respirator, but because of respiratory physiology, sometimes that will actually help open up certain segments of the lungs that are needed for oxygenation. But it's really important to keep in mind that they are on a respirator every single time to open up those lung airways, and they're usually on sedation as well to keep them comfortable. And my last question, doctor, is after someone, someone's heart stops, is it possible that they continue to respire? Um, it is, well, hmm. I'm not sure I could answer that with certainty other than to say there are these things that are called agonal breaths. So when I'm in the intensive care unit with a patient who is dying and they go into cardiac arrest, um, once in a while you will see them take one or two extra breaths. Um, I'm not sure the exact mechanism or the physiologic trigger for that. Um, so you could potentially see um, some extra breaths um, for a short period of time. By a short period of time, up to a minute? Uh, in, in my experience, if the heart has completely stopped, um, I would not expect to see the breathing continue for up to a minute, but I might expect it to see, be seen for several seconds.